This is a box I built to control the voltage. Today we're going to test the voltage loss on this wire. This is 18 AWG. This is 10 AWG. And as you can see, we have about 19 feet. Just goes up and doubles back just so I can stay here and have the power supply unit and the live scope unit in the same spot so I'm not running back and forth in the garage. This is my fluke meter. This is measuring the voltage at the end of the wire run. This is supplying the wires with power. It's going down there and then back up and then running the live scope. I do want you to take note that right now I have 12 volts and I have 12 volts. There's no voltage loss. There's no voltage loss on there right now. And the reason is there's no load. You need to have a load to have voltage loss. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test this at 12, 14, 16, and 18 volts. That's, gonna, that's going to simulate your different types of batteries. Your lithium ion batteries, your silver blood acid batteries, your lithium iron phosphate batteries, and your NMC batteries from Ant. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna record if there's any difference in voltage drop between the different ranges of voltage. Is a voltage drop gonna be the same at 12 volts as it would be at 18? Today we're gonna find that out, so stick around, should be a good one. Okay, we have 12 volts. We do see our current and our watts jumping around a little bit. And we see our voltage here jumping around as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the average right there. I'm not really gonna pay much attention to the live scope voltage because there's a little bit of a difference. They're not really all that accurate compared to the flukes. And besides, I'm only concerned really from the power in the wires here to the power out right here on this side. So what happens after this point, don't really care. I just want to get the voltage drop from this point around the loop back over here. So with 12 volts going through 18 AWG, we have an average of 11.31 volts on the Garmin side of the wires. That comes out to a voltage loss of 0.69 volts. We're also gonna look at the current. So with 12 volts going through 18 AWG, I put my meter in series with the Garmin, and this is our average current going through the unit. So now with our supply voltage at 14, going through 18 AWG, our average voltage at the unit is 13.42. That comes out to a voltage loss of 0.58. So with 14 volts going through 18 AWG with the meter in series, looks like we're pulling an average of 1.595 amps. So with 16 volts going through 18 AWG, we are measuring 15.48 volts on the Garmin end. Now if you take 16 volts, subtract 15.48, you get a voltage loss of 0.52 volts. All right, with 16 volts going through 18 AWG, my meter in series, we're starting to level out on average 1.5 three five five amps all right we're at 16 so now let's go ahead and bring her up to 18 this is going to be the maximum voltage of my 93 sv there we go 18 volts 18 volts going through 18 awg and let's get an average voltage here so with an average voltage of 17.56 and our supply voltage of 18, we take 18, subtract 17.56 from it, and we get a voltage loss of 0.44 volts. Let's, let's go ahead and get set up to read the current. While we're talking about current, I wanna talk about the draw on the black box. I know a lot of guys like to put, their, put a switch in so they're not um, 
wasting battery going from one side of the lake or the other. But I just want to point out at 12 volts, the draw of that black box is only 0 0.01415, which is virtually nothing. Um, you would never really see that become a factor unless you just leave your Garmin hooked up to your batteries for months on end. As far as going from one side of the lake to the other or even one day to the next, it probably isn't enough of a big deal to even worry about. That's at 12 volts. Let's go ahead and switch that to 18 volts. So as you can see here, 18 volts, black box is consuming 0 0.01. So not, not much power at all. All right, 18 volts through 18 AWG, meters wired in series. We're getting an average of 1.28 amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up for the 10 AWG test. So make sure you stick around. Do me a favor if you haven't already. If you like what I'm doing here, hit that thumbs up button and share this with uh, your friends, your other fishing buddies, someone that's got a Garmin that you think might be interested in this type of information. So I know other videos like this have been done before, but I don't think anyone's really gone in depth as much as I have as far as the different voltage ranges and different wires. Thanks guys, stick around. All right guys, got our all set up. We have our power box here, putting out 12 volts going to 10 AWG and we are just past the nine foot mark over here and we double back to the Garmin. I've got my meter hooked up, 12 volts there, 12 volts there as expected. There's no load so there is no voltage lost. Once I turn on the Garmin, that's where we see our voltage loss. All right, we got 12 volts going through 10 AWG, back up to the meter. And this is our average voltage, 11.67. That comes out to a voltage loss of 0.33 volts. I'm gonna get set up to get the average amps. So at 12 volts, going through 10 AWG wire, I have an average current of 1.9, we'll call it 1.9 amps. Hey, do me a favor. I wanna know how you guys are running your batteries for your live scope. Are you running, running them from all the way back to your boat? Are you using a dedicated battery? Are you using a smaller battery like an Amped Outdoors 48 amp hour and throw it in your LOD rocker. I know a lot of guys have started doing that and so I came out with a LOD rocker box, just a small little guy to house that battery. I'll make sure to leave a link down in the description for that box so you can check it out. So let's get back to it. We have 14 volts going through 10 AWG wire. And on the Garmin end, we have 13.71 for voltage loss of 0.29. So at 14 volts, going through 10 AWG wire, my meter's wired in series, to measure current, we have 1.589 amps. All right, 16 volts going through 10 AWG. And we have an average of 15.77. That comes out to 0.23 volts lost. So now at 16 volts, going through 10 AWG wire, meter wired in series, we have 1.424 amps on average. 
All right, so last test here, we have 18 volts, 10 AWG. Our voltage at our unit is 17.84 for a voltage loss of 0.16. So at 18 volts, going through 10 AWG wire, we get an average current draw of 1.227. So now that that test is complete, let's take a look at these results here and talk about them. So right here on the left, you got 18 AWG, below it 10 AWG. The voltage out of the power box, average voltage uh, from the meter. So you see here, we have 0.69. As we go up in voltage, we lose less voltage. Um, our power loss really starts to decline as do our as does our current so um, if you are running 18 volts you got 0.44 volt loss which really isn't that bad and that's with 18 AWG now keep in mind this test is on one unit. I know a lot of you guys are running several different units on your boat. So if you're running the smaller 18 AWG wire with a higher voltage battery, like the Amped Outdoors 48 volt battery, NMC battery, you're probably going to be just fine. There's not a whole lot there uh, because that voltage is so high. Um, and really, you're probably going to be more in the six. 16 volt range so you'll lose a half a volt if you ran it 19 feet or whatever if you're running this from like a lod rocker you cut all these numbers in half you know you're running maybe eight or ten feet of wire so uh, your losses will be pretty minimal if you're running 18 awg say you got like one of these boxes you run it through your you put your battery in here and Here's a SA port, so you just plug in and run it. If you run 18, you'll lose probably a quarter of a volt, um, somewhere in that range. So overall, not that bad. You can always, you know, put bigger wire in too. I'm not like advocating to use smaller wire or anything. I'm just showing you the numbers. So if you were to go with one of these, one of the cool things we do is we make sure our ports line up with the chargers so this is the this is the nmc charger and that guy is going to plug right in there so you never have to open your the, your battery uh never have to open up the top all you gotta do is turn that switch on and that's going to charge your battery when you're done fishing now let's look at 10 awg um, as expected voltage loss is less um, and again, the higher your battery voltage, the more efficient, not your fish finder, we, we know that's already been proven wrong, but more efficient, your battery's able to deliver that, deliver that power to your fish finder. Um, at 12 volts, 10 AWG, you got 0.33 lost volts in a, uh, you know, 18, 19 foot wire run again if you're running this from your rod locker cut that cut these numbers in half uh, all the way down 16 volts 0.23 volts loss so yeah pretty interesting results let me know what you guys think if these were the results you expected or um, let me know what wire you're running on yours did you run smaller wire or have you had problems uh, let me know Hey, if you're new to the channel, do me a favor. Check out this video right here. I also tear down lithium batteries, mainly fish finder lithium batteries. And sometimes I find a dud, sometimes I find some, some good deals. So please uh, check out this video where I tear down this battery and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.